Hey guys, it's our Cozy Cryptography class of 2022. This is our class. Say hey guys. Hi. Hi. And today we're going to start it right off with the history of codes. The first known evidence of cryptography was in 1900 BC in Egypt. Uh, the usual hier the hierogly hieroglyphic symbols were replaced by unusual ones. And then we moved to the Caesar cipher in 100 BC, and it was used as a form of encryption, and they sent messages to the army generals. Then we used the Vigineer cipher in the 16th century, and it introduced the idea of an encryption key. The Herbert Rotor used a single rotating disk. Rotors are disks that are covered along with letters, and you can change them. But it was too easy to break. So the Enigma machine had three or more rotors, which all rotated at different rates, and it was always used by Germany during World War II. But eventually the code was cracked and used to help them in the war. The Pigpen cipher was created in the early 18th century by the Freemasons as a means of keeping their history hidden from those who they pose, who pose as threats to their organization. It was also used to send messages to their allies while minimizing the risk of, of the codes being decrypted. Uh, so the Pigpen cipher is basically a series of like tic-tac-toe, tic-tac-toe grids and X's arranged with um, letters, numbers, or symbols in certain patterns, and jar space therein, you get a symbol like one of these. And that's what it says. The M209 is an um, encoder and decoder used during World War II and the Korean War. Um, it's a polyalphabetic cipher, which means that it changes all of the letters but according to numbers. And space, all of the spaces are Z's because there are no spaces on the machine. And it's entirely mechanical, so you can avoid problems such as power outages or lightning. lightning so as you can see, um, there are six gears that are used, 26, 25, 23, 21, 19, and 17 letters. When you combine all that, you get 101 million combinations of all the different wheels. And then it becomes even more complex because you can see there are pins on the wheels and in this barrel up here. And if you add all of those, all of that into the equation, you get 36 times 10 to the 94th power number of possibilities. Vinyls are the historical and much older predecessors of CDs, and they were flat discs which had grooves, which were read using needles to play music. CDs are more modern and were, instead of having grooves, they had ridges and bumps and were read using a laser. The laser would register a change in elevation as a 1, and if it didn't and it was flat, it would register a 0. Those 1s and zeros were binary code, which is how computers use data and store data, which would be translated into audio or video. And then we got Blu-ray, which works very similar to CDs as in reading the ridges as 1s and zeros, but um, the ridges were a lot smaller and more compact, so they were able to hold more information Credit card numbers are designed to be complex and difficult to change properly. To verify a credit card number, you have to use this equation. This equation, um, and the last digit, uh, the 16th digit, is a check digit to make this equation return a multiple of 10. And uh, there's other similar ideas that you'll see uh, in everyday products. Uh, like uh, QR codes and UPC codes, which you can find at the store. The Huffman codes were made so that a computer would be able to read words, code, and other different types of codes. This is accomplished by shortening the alphabet and then using the assigned binary to the few letters that remain. So you start by assigning the um, percentages to each of the letters, and then Add up the two smallest numbers and continue going, continue adding them until you get to one. And then you assign your binary codes to each of the letters and then you make words with them. Alright, 
right, so the half problem is a situation where uh, the party host, whenever the people come into the party, the party host flips a coin to see if they would give you a red and a blue. Uh, so the problem is, is that people can see each other's uh, hats, but not theirs, and they can't cheat by taking it off or looking at a reflective uh, surface. Um, they all have to guess uh, at the same time, and they all have to guess correctly. If one of them uh, makes a mistake, they all lose. And before they enter the room, they can also plan the situation. In a situation of three, our class came up with a simple strategy, which is if, uh, after you're given your hat, you look at the other two people, and if they have opposite hat colors, then you say nothing. And if they have the same hat color, then you guess the opposite of that color. When there were four people, we couldn't find a strategy that produced a result more than 50%. And with Dr. Salazar's help, we used binary to get in a, in a situation with seven people, and it had a 87.5% chance to win. And with 15 people, it had a 93.5% chance to win. Any questions?